What is up everybody and welcome to FLW Videos. In today's episode, we are going to tackle the massive topic of type effectiveness in Pokemon Go. Pokemon Go is definitely unique to just kind of the main series and how everything works. For example, you have immunities in the main series which would do zero damage. However, in Pokemon Go, it does the equivalent of a double resistance, which we will be talking about later on in this episode. But I just wanted to go ahead and preface that because Pokemon Go is unique, so maybe you're rusty to it, maybe you are just kind of wanting to learn it, that's going to be a perfect episode for this. So what we're going to do specifically is break this down into two different sections. The first one being just the resources that you can use, the different websites, the different apps that you can download to just kind of check all of that stuff. And then secondly, just actually going through all of the different types and logically explaining the weaknesses and of course the super effective damage that you can do with that specific type. I think if you kind of hear that type of stuff, it could make it easier to remember. Now the reason why this is so important in Pokemon Go right now is really a twofold thing. First things first, you have PvP, so understanding type effectiveness is going to massively give you a leg up versus your opponent, especially if they don't understand all of it. And then secondly, we end up getting some new multipliers, which means that super effective damage is going to do more than it ever has in the past, as well as resistances is really going to prevent the amount of damage that someone can do something against you. So type effectiveness has all of a sudden become a very important factor and something that I am so excited to be able to cover. So as far as resources are concerned, I really have two different things that I want you to be able to take away from this. The first is from a website called pvpchart.com. The owner of the website reached out to me stating that they created this really cool infographic showing all of the weaknesses, everything that you are strong against, as well as the resistances, and just like a neat little picture, which I do think is super helpful. So make sure to go to that website, get yourself that screenshot, or you can even get a printable PDF if you want to drive around in your car or whatever and just have have like a physical copy it can be massively helpful so i do want to go ahead and share that the next thing that i want to share is an app this would be related to android but i know that apple has an equivalent of it as well but that is the app called type calc what you do is you go into the app and you can type in what type of pokemon you actually have for example if you have a swampert you'll press that defense go ahead and type in that water ground and you will see that it is only weak to the grass type instead now there is one caveat to all of this and that's that it's really towards the main series game so immunities are going to technically be incorrect but other than that it's still just a good general like guide to figure out what exactly is going on you can also switch it to attack as well so if you for instance wanted to attack with a water type move you can see everything that it would be super effective against i personally downloaded it i've enjoyed it so far and it's definitely helped me do some quick checks in battling so now that we have covered some of the resources, I do want to go ahead and dive into the specific typings, talking about the weaknesses, talking about the strengths. I'm not going to go into the actual resistances. However, I am going to list them as well so you can see them all there. And hopefully that is going to be helpful to kind of get you to understand everything. Make sure to stick around until the end of the episode where we will briefly cover a little bit of information around dual type Pokemon, talk about double weaknesses, double resistances, and even triple resistances in certain situations. Bug type is weak to fire, flying, and rock type. Fire can easily burn bugs. Flying creatures tend to eat bugs for food, and rocks can easily smash bugs. Bugs are super effective against grass, psychic, and dark types. Bugs eat grass. The fear of bugs is a mind game, and the bugs are finally super effective versus dark type, mostly for balancing issues once dark type was added in to generation 2. Which leads into the dark typing. Dark type is weak to fighting, bug, and fairy. The reason why dark type is weak to fighting and fairy is the concept of good versus evil, with Pokemon being a franchise mostly related to children, good will always prevail and the bug type because of balancing issues that we mentioned earlier. Dark type is super effective against ghost and psychic type Pokemon. Ghost type because a dark hearted creature is unlikely to care about the woes of the dead. Psychic type because the fear of the dark creature can render someone's mind by paralyzing them with fear. 
Dragon typing is weak to ice, dragon, and fairy typing. Ice types because dragons are considered to be reptiles, therefore cold-blooded. So in cold weather, they tend to be slowed down. Dragon types because of a dragon's power, a dragon can be outmatched by another powerful dragon. And fairy types because in fairy tales, they tend to slay the dragon. Dragon types are super effective against dragon type because once again, dragons are strong enough to battle each other. Electric typing is up next. Electricity's only weakness is the ground typing. This is due to the grounding of electricity dispersing the signal, rendering it useless. Electric is super effective against water and flying types. Water because the electric current can travel through the water easier, and flying type because a paralyzed bird from electricity is in some deep trouble mid-flight. Fairy type is weak to poison and steel typing. Poison typing because fairies have a strong connection with nature. Remember the cartoon Fern Gully? A perfect example for sure. Up next is the steel type because fairy types tend to be weak to steel type objects in folklore. Fairy is also super effective against fighting, dragon, and dark type. Fighting because of fairy's magic is just too strong for a fighter. Dragon type because although they are both magical creatures, fairies must dominate more due to the size. And finally dark type because of the good versus evil concept. Fighting type is weak to fairy, flying, and psychic type Pokemon. Fairy because of magic easily being able to take control over a fighter with a weak mind. Flying because what are you going to do with these muscly arms if you cannot reach me? And finally, psychic type because brains outclass bronze. Fighting type is super effective against normal, rock, ice, dark, and steel type. Normal because of a UFC fighter will take it down no problem, rock because fighters can smash rocks, ice because a fighter can crack the ice, dark because of the good versus evil concept, and steel type because you can bend steel into the shape with enough force. Fire type is weak to water, ground, and rock types. Fire can be put out by throwing water on it, burying it, and rocks tend to contain fires. Just think about the last camping trip that you went on. Fire is super effective against grass, ice, bug, and steel types. Grass because grass gets burned by fire, ice because it gets melted by fire, bug because it gets burned by fire, and steel because it gets melted and molded by fire. Another interesting factor about the fire type is that it has the second largest number of resistances in Pokemon Go, only behind the steel type. Flying type is weak to electric, rock, and ice types. Electric because a bird paralyzed mid-flight is no good. Rock because of killing two birds with one stone, or as PETA would put it, feed two birds with one scone. Yep, uh, I bet you'll remember that one now. Ice type because birds flying south for the winter to avoid that awful cold. So flying type is super effective against grass, fighting, and bug types. Grass because they use grass to make nests, fighting because you can't reach me up here muscly arm man, and bug type because birds eat bugs. The ghost type is weak to ghost and dark type. Ghost because only other ghosts can touch ghost. Dark type because a dark entity committing a crime doesn't care about the soul that it leaves behind. That actually kind of rhymed. Ghost is super effective against ghost and psychic types. Ghost because ghosts can touch other ghosts and psychic because ghosts tend to be a fear of the mind for many. The grass type is weak to fire, flying, ice, poison, and bug. Because of all of these can destroy plants in different ways, like pesticides to take care of those pesky weeds. Grass type is super effective against water, ground, and rock type. Grass absorbs water, grass takes nutrients from the ground, and grass can eventually grow over a rock over time. The ground type is weak to grass, ice, and water. Grass because it absorbs nutrients from the ground, ice because ground can render it useless for crops, and water because plants absorb water. Ground type is super effective against fire, electric, rock, poison, and steel. Ground can put out a fire. Grounding electricity controls it. Ground can encapsulate rocks. Good luck poisoning ground, and ground is super effective against steel because of, well, balancing issues. Ice type is weak to fire, rock, fighting, and steel type. Fire because it can melt ice. Rock because it can smash ice. Fighting because it can break the ice, and steel type because steel can withstand extremely cold temperatures. Ice type is super effective against grass, flying, ground, and dragon type. 
Freeze the grass. Send birds flying south for the winter, rendering the soil useless for crops and dragons because of them being cold-blooded and slowed down in colder temperatures. Normal type is only weak to fighting type. Being a normal type, good luck stepping into the ring with a trained UFC fighter. Normal type is not super effective against anything, but that definitely makes it unique on its own. Up next is the poison type. So poison is weak to psychic and ground types. Ground can absorb toxins, and a strong mind can develop techniques of avoiding toxins. Poison can be super effective against grass and fairy types. Pesticides can take out plants and weeds, and toxins in the forest affect fairies because of the connection that they have with nature. Psychic type is weak to bug, ghost, and dark types. These three weaknesses are associated to fears of the mind. On the other hand, psychic is super effective against fighting type and poison. Brain over brawn and good luck poisoning me, I'm too smart for that. Rock type is weak to water, grass, ground, fighting, and steel types. This is a lot to list off, so we will skip the reasoning for now on these. Rock is super effective against fire, flying, ice, and bug. Rock contains fire. Rocks can kill two birds with one stone or feed it a scone to them, not really sure what is reality anymore. And then rocks know how to break the ice and rocks can crush bugs. The steel type is weak to fire, ground, and fighting type. Fire because it can melt steel, ground because of earthquakes can destroy man-made structures, and fighting type because a strong enough person can bend steel. Steel is super effective against rock, ice, and fairy. Moving from the stone age to the industrial time period, steel can withstand the cold, and fairies tend to be weak to steel type objects in folklore. The real interesting thing about Steel types is that it does have the highest number of resistances among all of the other types in Pokemon Go, which totals up to 11. The last of the typing is the Water type. Water type is weak to grass and electric. Grass because it can absorb water and electricity can travel easier through water making it dangerous. Water is super effective against fire, ground, and rock because water can put out fires, soften the ground to mud, and eventually corrode a rock into nothing. So yeah, that just about wraps up the video. Hopefully you did learn something from this and how important the different typing actually is in Pokemon Go. I think that this is a great resource. Hopefully you can take away something from this. And instead of ending on a question of the day, what I'm actually gonna end on is a couple of different quotes kind of walking through some different situations of like a double resistance, a double super effective, just all of those things related to dual time Pokemon. If you are curious how all of that works, let's go ahead and end on that. But if you did enjoy this type of video, make sure to like and subscribe and I will see you next time. Aftershock hit me like a tidal wave. Oh. Triggered by the aftershock. Oh. oh, oh.